Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Women's AM. This morning we are discussing the ostracised Muslim woman. We've discussed a few scenarios before the break about what can lead to this feeling of isolation. But I want to move on now, Sister Saima, to talk a little bit more, um, you know, about what are our responsibilities towards these sisters? What can we do to help them? So the Prophet وسلم, he said, a Muslim is a brother to another Muslim and any Muslim who alleviates the burden or the worry of another believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will personally alleviate the worry and the burden for that believer on the day of resurrection when we're all going to need a lot of mercy and a lot of help and a lot yeah. of burdens <laughs> alleviated. The person who exemplifies this hadith best, of course, is going to be the Prophet وسلم. The Prophet وسلم, was a person who always sought out um, the weak, the destitute and essentially the rejects of society, the people had that had been uh, ostracized. One beautiful example that every single time reduces me to tears is the example of Zahir. Um, this is a man who basically had a skin condition and he was quite, um, the meme is the word in, in word in Arabic, means he was quite a, ugly basically. Right. Um, this is a man that was uh, used to work in the marketplace and used to, because of his uh, appearance, used to work in the backs of the marketplace um, and not a lot of people used to hang around with him, including Muslims. They were very um, uh, embarrassed to be around him. Yeah. The Prophet وسلم, knew this. The Prophet وسلم, knew that this man suffered from low self-esteem. He sought him out in the marketplace and played a joke on him. Uh, he came behind him and grabbed him and started saying, who will buy this slave of mine? Who will buy this slave of mine? He did this in order to attract attention to the relationship he has with this reject. Yeah, You I don't want to be around him. I am not only going to be around him, I'm going to embrace this man publicly. Yeah. When uh, the Z Zahir actually felt the, the hand of the Prophet وسلم, on his skin, which nobody wanted to touch, and obviously we know the Prophet وسلم, his skin was softer than silk, mashallah. Um, he actually stopped fighting back. He stopped like tussling with the Prophet because he was so overwhelmed with this, this uh, scenario right yeah. here. And um, after he said to something though that really emotionally affected the Prophet وسلم, and really upset him, he he said, oh, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa nobody would ever want to buy me anyway. And this uh -huh. really affected yeah, the Prophet yeah. sallallahu alayhi wa He turned him around, placed his hands on his shoulders and looked him directly in the eye and said, in the eyes of Allah, you are so beautiful. So these are examples of where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa knew how to, even, it's not necessarily um, financially helping someone or, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be a big act. Even a kind word is an act of charity that could transform somebody's yeah. world basically um, you know other examples are the example of Jalebib as well who was a dwarf who the Prophet وسلم, helped get married yeah. you know yeah. and so the Prophet وسلم, helped people and this is something that we need to embody we need to see follow the second hadith I want to give the best amongst you are those who are most useful to the people we need to seek out the people who are in need of our help help people find work help people who are uh, trying to adopt help people um, who are trying to get married what is happening at the moment is that we're becoming quite individualistic. Well, I've got a beautiful wife. Sorry, bruv, I haven't got time for you. I've got lovely children. Sorry, sis, I haven't got time for you. We need to break away from that and yeah. return to the example of the Prophet ﷺ. Absolutely, absolutely. And Jazakallah for sharing two absolutely beautiful stories there. You're right, very, very, very emotionally charged. You know, we've covered a lot of the, um, you know, scenarios and a lot of the theory around, um, you know, these problems that we face. But um, what I'd like from you, Fazana, now is just your final take-home message. You know, what can we say to our sisters out there to, to help them to advise them, you know, to try and deal with this problem, inshallah. Well, my first advice would definitely be just to speak out. If you have an issue, speak out. Find the relevant sources. You know, in my field of work, that's what I do. Yeah. Mainly listen to people, help people. So don't be afraid of saying things. Don't be afraid of being shunned. Because you know what? You don't need them anyway. If they're not going to help you, you don't need <laughs> them. There's someone out there who will mm -hmm. help you. Talk about it, educate each other. Yeah. And, and definitely, if you feel like someone is doing something wrong, speak out because yeah. you will be asked um, because watching oppression, allowing it ha to happen, mm -hmm. you yourself are complicit in it. You are, yeah. you are an oppressor. Whether you say, no, no, I'm not, I don't mean it for it to happen, you're doing that. Yeah. You're just yeah. as bad as a person who's doing the oppres oppression. Yeah. So definitely help each other. Um, the sisters shouldn't be afraid. There's this, inshallah, together we can work together as a community and eradicate this ostracization. It should not be happening anymore. Absolutely, inshallah. Jazakallah for that beautiful reminder. And Sister Nasra, have you got a final take home message? I think one, for of the the, um, one of the things I would say is in increasing the dialogue as well. Yes, talking about it, not just within each other, but also raising that awareness. We should actually get our organizations, um, such as, for example, your organization that help deals with this, and actually collectively work together in that sense as well. Don't be afraid to talk about the issues. Try and always, wherever you can, help somebody. Yeah. 
and just offer your time really even volunteering at these places actually would actually be very helpful because it will give you that sense of intense realism with the people who are suffering yeah, absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic and sister Saima mm -hmm. your final take-home message well please. I think again I would like to repeat the hadith the best amongst us are those who are most useful to the people we should try and see where we can offer mm -hmm. some kind of support and some kind of help to the people in need mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely and I really loved your reminder there about the small acts because yeah. I think sometimes you know we kind of think I don't have money I don't have a lot of time mm -hmm. you know I really don't see how I can help or how I can you know improve the situation for these sisters but you're absolutely right the small acts the small act of kind words or smiles or you know just showing that you're there for you and not not judging these sisters absolutely. I think that's really really important so Jazakallah her sister some really fantastic advice there the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, help your brother, whether he be the oppressed or the oppressor. As a result, we have a responsibility to help both those who are being victimized and those who are causing this oppression. As, our, as an Ummah, our responsibility lies in providing adequate support for our sisters who have been pushed to the side and to educate the current and the next generation on the rights of our fellow brothers and sisters. This has been such an informative discussion and it really is an important topic. But if you missed any of it, then all is not lost. You can catch the repeat tomorrow morning at 6.